This video is sponsored by Brookwells Parts and Accessories. Make sure that you're ordering from Brookwells. This will help us to help you to stay on the road. Okay, hello, welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. This is actually going to get very intense on this video, so I hope you've got your mathematics heads on. This, uh, you remember, I've uh, showed you a video of Eugene um, measuring today. He's having the day off because he's been working very hard on his GSE uh, level uh, mathematics, and I've uh, given him the opportunity to catch up on some uh, Battlefield 1. So, anyway, you've got me today. Uh, just to recap, I've uh, told you that you put shims or the original shims that you took out the diff back in and then pushed the bearing race back in uh, to place okay Ashcroft's actually actually use a dummy uh, bearing which is a bit smaller so it can just pop out but we don't have that luxury I've also put the bearings straight onto the pinion and then we've put the pinion into the housing and then nipped it up so it's got some drag on it so it's got a bit of preload on this is where we can then start to measure the height of the pinion okay so Land Rover say to use a pinion height block and depending on the diff is what height block you use uh, you set your uh, dial gauge to zero, put it on the top of the pinion head and then measure at the bottom of the bearing ball. You measure both of the bearing bores. Um, this is the difference from zero. You then add them together. Okay, so what we're looking for is the mean and divide by two. Yeah, so we've actually halved it. This will then tell us the difference um, between zero and not zero. So we're looking to get a pinion height measured with the block and the dial gauge to zero or as close as we can get it. We then have to, if we have a difference, work out the, uh, the shim differences and work out which shim we actually need. Right, so the setting block that we uh, see in the workshop manual, okay, it does have a part number. On this specific diff, which is a 300 TDI from the Discovery, it uses a 39.50 millimeter setting with a dial gauge. Now the tool here you can see is LRT 54503. Okay, you can buy these from a uh, company and I'll make a separate video showing you exactly how to use these. Okay, uh, these are not from Brookwells. Uh, however, it is necessary and it's not necessary, but uh, the whole idea behind it, I'll show you, it is actually the uh, exact height that we need. Okay, so the pinion is set correct and we have to measure off that one. So what we do here, and I'm using a flat brake drum, okay, that's the nearest machined thing I could find, is set this dial gauge to zero, okay? So it says nominal settings dimensions is represented by the settings gauge block, LRT54503, reference from pinion end face to bottom radius of the differential bearing ball. That actually sounds quite complicated, but it's not. So what we're looking at here is the dial gauge square, the base of the dial gauge squarely set on to the pinion head. And what I'm trying to do here is move the dial gauge till I find the lowest point of the bearing ball on one side. Okay, once I've found that, uh, which worked out to be uh, 0.475 or near enough as that is the reading for one side okay now what we do there is register that one and then what I have to do is actually set this dial gauge up back up again because the arm uh, will be different because it's uh, the diff pinion is offset then do repeat exactly the same thing and then get the readings, um, add them together, and then half them to find the mean reading. Well, I've just explain, explained that. And you have to really make a note whether it's a minus or a plus reading. Okay, so what we got on one side was 0 0.475, and the other side was 0 0.270. So we'll add those together first. Okay, and then will divide by two. 
Well, I'm not very good with mathematics, to be honest with you. It's been a long time since I've uh, used my brain power this much. And, uh, yeah, basically, so what I'll do is use a uh, scientific calculator. And you can see here this comes up with some gobbledygook. Eugene told me to press that button. And that is the mean uh, height difference of the pinions. So what I need to do is... Uh, take this away because it's higher than it should be from the shim that is actually fitted already now uh, this is only an example so we've got a shim here okay which measured out at 2.35 um, and just to verify that Eugene actually did measure it and got it right if you remember the video um, so that's 2.350 millimeters okay so if I minus because it's higher than it should be I need to get this down to as zero as possible. Um, I'll just minus the 0 0.372. Okay. Again, scientific calculator. Press the SD button. So I want a shim thickness as 1.978 underneath the bearing. There are bearing, uh, sorry, shims for the pinion height here. These are the part numbers, and you can order them from Brook Wells. You have to phone them up and order them, and they will send you at the shims that you require. Okay, so you're probably in tears by now realising uh, these tools. It is getting a bit intense. However, um, if you look, Google up uh, this uh, video, Differential Builder Ashcroft Transmission, the one that's 15 minutes long. This is interesting. You'll find the guy is measuring the pinion height with a different method. They are using a dummy pinion and bearing, which obviously makes it up quicker for them. But what you can do is uh, fit your bearing race, get your bearing before you put it onto the pinion, and then clamp it down, pull it down, so it's got um, preload on it. You have the bearing on the other side, and what you want to do is measure from the face to here. Okay, so that's the face of the bearing to the top of the uh, bore or the half bore. So you can see the guy doing this here, and he gives you a measurement of uh, 111.12 one, one, one millimeters. That is what you need. You will need a depth gauge of 150 millimeters with a bar across the top, which is at least 190 millimeters, okay? About 35 pounds from uh, uh, eBay. However, what we have here, I'm afraid that I do like the measurements and the mathematics. So the uh, height gauge, you could go to an engineer's and have it machined. If you're doing a lot of diffs, then it'll be worthwhile. The block that I've got here is worthwhile. You could have an engineer build up a block for you. It will tell you in the workshop manual exactly the right dimensions. Do not use aluminium because it expands uh, very quickly under heat. You want something that's uh, fairly stable when warm or cold. Anyway, there is more to this because um, our pinion height is nominal, which is zero. Okay, that is uh, normal, as they might say. Okay, if you have a pinion that's manufactured and has a minus three on it, that means it has less uh, by three thousandth of an inch or plus three, which is higher by three thousandth of an inch. And this is not millimetres, so you have to do a mathematical equation to work out how much extra you have on the pinion height. So I hope this makes it a little bit clearer for you. Okay, so we are going to measure the four pin diff housing. I've already pushed the bearing in. The one you saw earlier was this one. This happens to have not been touched. So the pinion height that I measured earlier that was over height um, is something that I just took the crown wheel off of. Right, so this one we're going to work on. This is a nominal height, which means no markings or zero. First of all, what I do is uh, make sure if I'm using one of these dial gauges, I have to get the arm and everything set up somewhere close because the diff is indeed offset. Now these, uh, the block here, okay, I'm resting it on something that's machined. You need possibly a machine table. Uh, you can't just do this on the bench top. You need maybe a brake disc or brake drum, and this is what I'm using. So the, it's actually level, otherwise you're not going to get a, a decent setting. The other thing is, is you want to put a preload on the dial gauge. So if the reading happens to be below zero, it will actually register. 
Okay, so it doesn't matter uh, whether you put it 2 mil or, or 1 mil or whatever. Now, you want to take the reading from here, the lowest point in the center of the uh, bearing bore. Okay, that is really, really important. Okay, so I'll just drop this on. What you do basically is um, I've uh, locked it off with a magnet and I'm just turning it slightly so I find the lowest point which is there which is minus 0 0.05 of a millimetre, okay? So that's our reading, which is actually a minus, okay? I've also measured the other side, and that comes out at a minus 0 0.140. Um, so you're measuring both sides. This one's 0 0.050, okay? Hang on, just think about that. Yeah, 0 0.50, yep. Just to make sure I'm right here, millimetres. And again, as I explained earlier, you add both of these together. And I'm doing this uh, with my brain instead of a calculator. This one's fairly easy. Um, and then divide by two. So you're probably quicker at working things out than I am. But this works out at uh, zero, a point, nine, four, five. No, zero point... 0 0.5, uh, 95, that's it, 0 0.95, it's nearly 0 0.1 of a mil. Right, okay, well I put two shims in earlier uh, to lift the pinion bearing up a little bit to get the uh, pinion height and then push the bearing down. Right, so I'd actually measured them beforehand, so that's 1.55 mil and 1.77 mil, okay, which added together is 3.32 of a mil, okay. Um, there you go, 3.32 of a mil. Okay, my maths is okay. Because we had minus readings or below zero readings, what I'm now doing is adding 0 0.95 of a uh, millimeter. I was near enough uh, point, uh, 0 0.1 of a mil, and it gives me this reading. So I really want shims that adds up to this, okay, which will bring the pinion height up to zero. I think, to be honest with you, that we're all okay with what we've got, 3.32. There's not much in it. And all, even with all these measurements, we still are not sure whether we're going to be 100% right. This all depends when we set the backlash up. Anyway, this tool is uh, indispensable, really. Um, it's got three settings. Um, basically, uh, the first one, which you've seen today, uh, which is rationalized uh, differentials. This one's for the Salisbury one, the lower one, and the middle one is for non-rationalized axles. So, uh, yeah, as I'm saying, you need something which is like a machined table, which uh, a brake drum, which is new, or a new brake disc will do just fine.